conversation. Chit chat. Heart to heart. Argument. It's all based on language. Conversation is the base of every friendship and relationship that ever existed. It's through conversation. And love it or hate it, <coughs> we're blessed to have a voice and some ears. And so, like Lynn was saying, we can be mindful about the way that we talk and we listen. I have some techniques to share with you and I have some tips. And then Lynn will come up and we'll use those tips and techniques and then we'll talk about it. More conversation. The techniques that are stated in the manual are small talk, fact, dis fact disclosure, viewpoint and opinion, and personal connection. So we start with small talk, and we know what small talk is. It's about the weather, it's about your surroundings, it's about something that we can all relate to. Not very deep. Followed by a little fact disclosure, it's snowing. Or it's not snowing. <laughs> it's a fact. And then you can move from there into a viewer opinion. I love the snow. I can't stand the snow. Something like that. And then you can get personal. And where the personal connection is, is probably where the relationships and the friendships are formed. My tips on conversation. Start with heart. Be open, be positive. We put out energy when we talk and when we listen. And we all know the feeling of going up to someone at the cocktail party and they're in a bad mood and you're like, how's it going? It's going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. It's not that intriguing to continue on the conversation. Start with heart. My next tip is just to follow the things that we're learning in Toastmasters with the good eye contact, with the vocal variety, with expression. I think of my girlfriends that have told me they love calling me when they're pregnant or they're getting married because I freak out every time. I love it. I'm so excited to get that call. And in comparison, apparently some people are just like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so I think that we can improve our conversations with, with our feelings and our, our vocal variety and enthusiasm. And then I think the most important thing and the most challenging thing that we all have a practice of doing is, like Lynn said, really listening. And that comes with being present in a conversation, and it comes with not thinking of what you're going to say next when they're speaking. This is probably speaking 101, but I think it's a nice reminder. Because if we really can be present in, in a conversation, and we can really hear what the person's saying or asking and not thinking I know what they're going to say. Maybe we'll react in a genuine way and in an empathetic way or an excited way. And we can really feel and have that conversation. So again, the tips start with heart, stay present, and, and have some variety and enthusiasm. And use open-ended questions. You'll get answers that are more interesting than yes or no. And so with that, I invite Lynn, and we're going to be, we haven't met before, and we're at the Trailside Valentine's party. It's the dual immersion class, and I've seen her around. We're like doing something and the kids are over here. You're Lynn? Are you Lynn? Uh-huh, yes. Oh, hi Lynn, I'm, I'm Sarah. Oh, Sarah, yeah. You know what? I have heard so much about you. I'm oh. so glad we could finally I meet. Know. It's nice to see you. Now, is your little one in the morning class or the afternoon class? Uh, the afternoon class, which oh. is great because I love to sleep in, and so does he. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. It's nice that it works out that yeah. way. My, my little guy, he's, he's in the morning class, so I'm not sleeping in. <laughs> right. Well, that's obviously why we haven't met before, <laughs> and you're not sleeping in. <laughs> and then, do you live around here in the Trailside area? Yeah, I just live over on, uh, you know, University Avenue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> University.
Bruce City, that's a, that's a, nice, that's a nice street. It's, it's a bit busy. Uh, we, we live on Starview, so it's, it's more of the cul-de-sac. Oh, I love that cul-de-sac. In fact, isn't that house next to you for sale? Because I've, I've been kind of eyeing, eyeing that house, and I would love to get on a cul-de-sac. You're right, our street is so busy. It just has me crazy most of the time. My sister lived on a busy street, though, and it was, it was actually, it worked out for them because the hum of the buses actually gave them some peace and quiet when everyone was shouting. <laughs> I love that. I love the way that you just took something kind of negative and spun it positively. That's, you know what? You're right. And I never have a hard time going to sleep because of that hum of the buses and the, and the trains and the airplanes and everything else going on. That's good. I, I, I do love our cul-de-sac, though. I, I, I wonder who's selling it. Could I help you get an appointment to go see the house? Are you really thinking about moving? Is this? Yeah, I think I really am. That would be great. In I'd love plan. to. Maybe we could. Uh, maybe I could come over and we could have a glass of wine first, and and then go and see your neighbor's house. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that would be great. I I really value kids in the neighborhood. That's something that we have here on Starview that we didn't have. In um, Chicago, where we moved from, mm -hmm. and it's it's so wonderful to see my kids playing with the neighbors, and and um, and I really I, I just I, I value that. I think that that's just such a cool thing about Trailside community. Oh, it is, it is. I love that too. Kids all over the place. In fact, if you don't have kids, young kids, and you live in the Trailside community, you probably you might feel kind of out of place. I would think that too. Yeah. I would. You, you know, overrun. My, my friends call it the Burbs, which is surprising. You Did know? you ever think you'd live in the Burbs? I know, and here I am. I feel like I'm in, in Park City. Well, I really, I, I would love to have you over. I just, I think that that would be great. So maybe I can get your email address. And, great. Oh, that's yeah, really that nice. that sounds great. It's wonderful to meet you. I know. So I think you need to help now, but thank you. Okay. Yeah, let's go, Mel. <laughs> okay, we can just stay seated. Okay. So we're going to do part three of my speech is an informal conversation. Ah, were we effective in, in our conversation? Lynn, what, what do you think? Did you, did you feel like we moved through the techniques, started with small talk? Yeah, I, I felt like we started with small talk, but we didn't stay there very long which I really like, and I really appreciate that about someone like Sarah, because you can just kind of get right into it and feel like you've got a new friend within, you know, 45 seconds of meeting. So I, I felt, I don't know, does it, did anyone else feel that? <laughs> did you feel it? Yeah, did you feel it? <laughs> it was a little contrived. I mean, I, I really, I like it planned out what we were going to talk, and, and Lynn and I are, are friends, but we were we went out to coffee and we really weren't friends, uh -huh. but we became friends over coffee. So. Probably successfully I moved through. through. I think <laughs> you're right. <laughs> wine first, then coffee. Um, but I, I kind of, I was goofy to say that about my sister. You know, I would never say that. <laughs> someone living on university were, you know, quieted by the hum of the noise. So that was a little. But you took my curveball. <laughs> anyway, small talk. People love it, hate it. People good at it, not good at it. What's our What's our read this morning? The small talk is good. What you breaks you just not in the mood when you really don't feel like it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I have a question. Do you, Do you get? Does everyone think that small talk actually is small? I mean, do you feel like it's a necessary part of conversation? Do you feel like it should? You should have about 10 seconds of small talk and then launch into something more meaningful? You have to have the small talk. I mean, you just you can't start, start up and say, hey, nice to meet you. How do you feel about you know, the situation in Afghanistan? Right, right. Awkward. Yeah, that has to be some When I was, a, I was a bank teller at the bank part-time, and it was amazing the conversations that I would have with the people on the front line. That sometimes you just say, hey, some little opener, and then, man, they're launching in to they're going to divorce, their parents just die, or, you know, I mean, right. other. And sometimes you, you know, feel dumped and, on also. You're and just we like. Have incredible conversation. Right, right. I have a best.
best friend um, named Whitney, and we talk every Friday, which is so wonderful, and, and we've been doing it for a couple of years, and we always talk about the weather, and it is so funny. She lives in Montana, and we, and I identified it like six months ago, and I, and I said, okay, well, I, you know, is the sun shining? Is, you know, we're such old, we're such old people to do that, but on the same point, we've recognized that it's kind of a stage setting for the conversation. You know, and then we do, we do, we do get deep, whether we have five minutes or twenty minutes. You know, so I, I, I agree that it is, it is something to be aware of, but not something to shy away from. Well, thank you very much. I hope, like Lynn said, that we can all be mindful of our conversations today and good listeners, and start with heart. Thank you.